near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. How's it going, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Nearman Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, Master Edition, Omnibus, Volume 1. So, stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Before going any further, a big thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on February 7th or 6th, depending on where you get your books. Not sure why I started with the 7th first, but hey, here we are. So this is the latest addition to the official handbook of the Marvel Universe. And before we look at where it fits into the reading order, if there is such a thing, and I'll explain why here in a little bit, uh, let's check out what the standard edition cover looks like. The standard edition cover there is available everywhere. That's the one on the left-hand side. The cover on the right-hand side, that one is only available in the direct market. So places like CheapGraphicNovels.com or bdcosmos.com, or waltzcomicshop.com, comicsbugle.com, readcomics.com, or instocktrades.com, dyingbreedcollectors.com, organicpricebooks.com, tales of wonder, your local comic book shop, and DCBS. Places like that will have the direct market cover. But everything underneath the dust jacket is the same. And speaking of the dust jacket, uh, let's look at it here with the dust jacket on, the official handbook of the Marvel Universe Master Edition, Volume 1. A through L. That's right. It's volume one. No announcement of a volume two yet, but here's hoping. Omnibus up here. The official handbook of the Marvel Universe, Master Edition, volume one, A through L. And there is the beast right there. No assembly required. Amid the 1990s, the official handbook of the Marvel Universe evolved to meet the collector frenzy. like More like trading cards. And I'll explain what that is here in a bit. And this right here collects material of the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, Master Edition 1 through 36. The retail price of this being $100. While we have the dust jacket on, I'm going to give you a quick glimpse at the way it will look inside of your bookshelf if you have the previous volumes. So you have the original handbook of the Marvel Universe, the expanded deluxe edition, the 89 updated edition, and then the Master Edition, which takes us into the 90s. These were the brainchild of, of course, the legendary and gone way too soon Mark Grunewald, including this one here. And he tells a story about kind of like the start of all this, something I didn't know about until I read the ending of this omnibus. But this is the way that they will look on your shelf. But let's bring it back to this underneath the dust jacket. And actually, let's look at the flaps here. Master the Marvel comics of the early 90s. And then... A blurb about the creators, the bios, pretty much. Mark Grunewald, Glenn Hurdling, Len Kaminsky, Peter Sanderson, Murray Ward, and Keith Pollard are the main people that this is given credit to. And here we have, I think, the sixth lineup of the Avengers. What's really cool about this handbook is that it shows you the different lineups of the teams. Uh, because this one is unique. This is done in a landscape format like this, which we'll look at in a little bit, and I'll tell you about the history of why it's like that. So, I don't know. Um, I don't think any spoilers, really, because I'm just kind of giving you some pictures and stuff uh, and, and kind of give you a little bit of the behind the scenes while we're looking at exactly what this is. But this is the book that settles fights in the playground. All right, let's go ahead and crack this omnibus open. We have some black end sheets there. The official handbook of the Marvel Universe Master Edition with Cap in his many action poses. On the left-hand side are the credits, the detailed credits, as to anyone that contributed to this book, whether it's art or whether it's um, writing some of these bios. And then the characters in alphabetical order A through L. But not just the characters, because we also have teams and organizations and where you can find each of the pages, like the Avengers, because this is in alphabetical order. The races, like the Kree and the Lava Man. The action shots, these are fun. You, can, you probably saw a little glimpse of the action shots of Captain America there. The supporting cast, 
and then the power rating special glossary and cover gallery and this introduction from Mark Grunewald for the official handbook of the Marvel Universe Master Edition issue number one. So this does collect material from the official handbook of the Marvel Universe Master Edition 1 through 36, 888 pages. Now, that might be confusing to some people because there were only 36 issues released in the 90s. So a little bit of background as to what this is. And as a matter of fact, we're going to do this a little different. We're going to do it like this because just about everything in here is in a landscape format. So it will look like this. Uh, so in 1990... Mark Grumald and gang decided to publish a 36-issue master edition of their handbook. And what makes this one so unique is that each issue was shrink-wrapped with loose-leaf pages. So these were not in a comic book format. These were loose-leaf pages with a front. So if this was the front, this was the back of almost like a, what looks like an oversized trading card. It was in thick, like, uh, almost like a card stock, honestly, with three holes up at the top, because they thought ahead of time. In each one of these, you know, you would have a mixture of uh, female characters, male characters, and deceased characters, characters that are living, teens, and, and just, you know, it, different types of characters throughout the years, the different races, like the Kree. You, you kind of had an idea of what you were getting based on the cover, but that's why this is material from, because if it went for 36 issues and it just got any letter in the alphabet through each of those issues, I, can't, I, I, I don't want to call them issues because they were loose lip packs. Let's call them packs, I guess. Kind of like trading card packs. There were 36 packs. Each one of them was different, right? And it wasn't like a blind pack. It wasn't like you didn't know what you were going to get. I'll show you what the covers look like here in a little bit. So why this way? Because... The three ring vinyl binder was trying to reach those people that were collectors, people that collected trading cards, whether it was baseball, basketball, football, garbage pail kid trading cards. Oh my gosh, dinosaurs attack, Mars attacks, whatever was popular in the 80s. And I realized Mars attacks and dinosaurs attacks were long before the 80s um, in the early 90s. That's what they were trying to cash in on because they noticed a rise in sales of the Marvel trading cards uh, they had by the night. 1990 was probably the Marvel Series 2 when it was coming out. Because I want to say 3 was 1992. But that's why it looks like this. So this is the 90s. We have some new characters. And the and the reason why it's in landscape format. The idea in the outro by Mark Grunewald talks about how it was actually John Byrne's idea. Because they kind of put themselves into a corner when they did the original one in the early 80s. Like, wait a second. You know, what if a character dies? Or what if we get new characters introduced in the Marvel Universe? And John Byrne was the one that thought of the idea, well, what about making it like a loose leaf where people can insert new characters? Or they can move characters that are dead to the back? And Mark Grunewald kind of set on it because he didn't think Shooter was going to be about that life. <laughs> he wasn't. It was a tough sell to even do the handbook. But uh, eventually, they did bring it back. They brought it back to the 90s in, in 1990. To, I think it went all the way to like 1993. These were released. And these were the ones I collected. These were the ones that, for me, bring back the most memory. Because it was... Oh my gosh, Aragorn. Do you remember this character from the... Uh, I think he ended up in the uh, Defenders, but he first appeared in the Avengers. But yeah, these were the ones that my friends and I would collect, my brothers would collect. Even even when some of my friends weren't getting into comics, these were sold at card shops. And they were like, dude, they're like big trading cards. And I'm like, dude, I know, because I'm a Marvel guy. And of course I knew all this. Now, this isn't the last time we were going to see in a, like the official handbook of the Marvel Universe. Um, but this is the last one that Mark Roomwald worked on. We lost Mark at a really young age, and it's not fair, uh, because this was his baby. This is what he loved to do, and I, I I don't even like to think about how young he was, because now I'm older than Mark Grunewald was when he passed away, and it's just nuts to think about that. Uh, but this was his brainchild, you know, this is what he brought to Marvel Comics when he first joined, and he got to see this. Now, 
later on there were some though like in 2004 2005 they did an another expanded one they did like just an x-men one they did one for the ultimate universe uh and you may see some of that stuff collected in omnis but this collects let's look at this really quick and then we'll go into detail as to what it collects uh so for example this is an alphabetical order so after atuma and aurora here we go avalanche so after avalanche you get the Avengers. Now, what's really cool is that this is the Avengers, the first lineup. So here it tells you the first appearance is the Avengers and the origin of the Avengers is Avengers number one. And it goes through the whole history here, like the major accomplishments, the number of active members, how long they were active. And then we get the second lineup. That is so cool. The second lineup of the Avengers. And it tells you pretty much when the membership started, like in issue number 16, the third lineup over here, it started in Avengers 114 to about 135. The fourth lineup, the fifth lineup, that's the one by George Pettis on artwork. And the sixth lineup, by now we're getting into the seventh, and this should be the last one because we are getting into the 90s. Boy, I was off by one number, I think. Right? I said the six. Uh, then we get to the Avengers West Coast, the first lineup, second lineup. Now, of course, these are just teams. But because... Oh, look at Hawkeye in the 90s, boy. With them sunglasses. But for individual characters, how they made it into this book is if they've had more than three appearances, uh, and that's all told through the introduction, if they had more than three appearances and... Or, I'm sorry, if they made such an impact. And what was the impact that they made? So you have villains, you have superheroes, you have deceased characters. And, of course, since we are talking about 1990 to 1993, a lot of this stuff is outdated because some of these characters that were deemed death here, or dead during this time, are now alive. But it's the very same thing that I could have said about any of these official handbook of the Marvel Universe. There's Beta Ray Bill. So, let's, let's focus on Beta Ray Bill. So you have... The front shot, the side shot, and the back shot. Why? Well, in the original official handbook of the Marvel Universe, or any that came afterwards, it was more like an action shot what you got. But Mark Grunewald decided to make this like a reference for artists, so that every artist knows what the characters look like, even their butts. That's right. Even when they have a cape, they got to move it out of the way. Uh, and in the bio, it tells you more detailed information about their real names, and their current aliases, and their group, um, that memberships, their height, their weight, their powers, distinguishing features, how intelligent they are. I mean, so much detail. And then, of course, the important thing that a lot of us collectors wanted to know, their first appearance and origin issues, or important issues. And just because it's a first appearance, like, for example, Beyonder, this one gets really interesting. Is the Beyonder made an appearance, his first appearance, in Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars number one? But if you look down here, as the voice only. And in Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars 2, number one, he makes an appearance in human form. But in Secret Wars 2, number three, he makes an appearance in the primary human form. And as Cosmos in Fantastic Four Annual 23. His origin issue is in Secret Wars 2, number eight, and Fantastic Four 319. And then it tells you the important issues, like the significant issues. And it's funny, like, some of these characters, how, you know, like, Binary is no longer Binary, right? Like, she's going as Captain Marvel, because that is Carol Danvers. But during this time, she was. There's some of the Animan. Bishop coming in for his first appearance in a handbook. Because I don't think he made... No, he didn't, because that was the... Uh, the 89 update that was characters like Venom. But Carnage should be here. Black Cat. And then... Obscure characters. This is so fun to just look at because it just brings back a lot of memories for me. Black Knight 2, their first appearance, Black Panther. But let's look at some of these, like, Captain America. What, what do they mean by action shots? What is that about? So let's get to Captain America. So Captain America has his own entry here. The biographical data, the physical description, powers and abilities, paraphernalia, and the bibliography. And then we get Captain America in action, showcasing what he looks like in action. Like, bouncing bullets off his shield, and throwing his shield around, knocking the crap out of three, I assume, Nazis. And then jumping on top of a bus. This is by Karen Dwyer. 
and Joe Rubenstein doing the inks. And then we have his supporting cast. We have Peggy Carter, Edwin Jarvis, uh, Diamondback here. These are people pretty much important to him during this particular era. Uh, there's Frank right there, and of course Sam Wilson, and Bernie! Right, Bernie. I don't... What's the last time we saw her? Anyway, uh, John Jameson and the D-Man himself. And then Captain Atlas, Captain Britain, right, Captain Marvel. And the Captain Marvel I grew up... Whoa. Hey, whoa. Okay, Mark. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Monica Rambo. Yeah. Okay, so the bibliography explaining, you know, the important issues, the origin issues... Captain Ultra, Captain Universe, the hero that could be you, appearing in Micronauts, Cardiac, and there he is, Carnage. Now, let's see what they deem as his first appearance. As Cassidy, 344, as Carnage, Amazing Spider-Man 359. Interesting, okay. So the debates, you know, this, this clarified a lot of debates. All right, I'm not going to flip through here. This is more of a walk down memory lane, but you get the idea, right? Like... This was the front of the card. This was the back of the card. Maria, last name unrevealed. Yeah, during this time, we did not know Pharaoh's last name. But this goes all the way to L, so it starts at Abomination, and it goes all the way to Elijah, the scroll that infiltrated the Fantastic Four. And without saying this, I'm pretty sure it's obvious, but just in case, this might spoil some storylines that you're currently reading. Um, well... If you're reading Omnis or Epic Collections, right? This might spoil some of those stories that you're reading. Hey, Lupo, this is the character that appeared in X-Men 62. Let's see. Yep, X-Men 62. Uh, he's one of the mutates. But, Lija, yes, she's the last one here. And then we get to, like, the explanation of the intelligence and strength and stamina. And then the special glossary. What some of these terms they use throughout the book mean. And this introduction here to issue number 13 of the official handbook of the Marvel Universe and number 16, 19, 26, 29, and 30. So I love the fact that they kept these. So this is what the covers look like. So like I said, they're not, they weren't blind packs, right? You, you knew who you were going to get inside of your pack. And that's why it's material from these issues because the stops at L... But we don't have like Midnight Sun and Ronin and Watchdog characters like that. That will be in Volume 2. Which, as of this video, has not been solicited yet. But you do have the covers through here. 13, 14, whenever they changed the covers. 17, 18, 20. Shatterstar! So lots of things that were happening in the 90s that, you know, were not previously collected in the... Um, other volumes. Strife represent the X-Men, baby. More X-Men team action. Oh, yeah. And not to be confused with Darkhawk right there, but that is Portal. Maverick. My wife and I were just talking about Maverick and the Saturday live stream, which we do every Saturday at 11 a.m. Wolver Wolverine's Descendant. One of these is Wolverine's Descendant. Uh, you can take a guess as to who. Lots of 2099 love. Again, not previously published. So, this is the Mark's remarks that I saw. This is, came from uh, Marvel Age 94, talking about how this came together, how it's the way that he would have done it. And then um, the official handbook. This Oh, this is the binder. Yeah. So, remember how I said these came with three ring, uh, what are they called? Three holes right there for your three ring binder. Yeah. So, they sold binders separately. I think we had two of these. Can't remember how many you could fit in there. It wasn't a lot, that's for sure. Um, but I think we did have a full set between me and my brothers. All right, let's talk about the binding. 888 pages. It is sewn binding, and that's what the eye looks like. Not much of an eye. Uh, printed at the iMac printer. And pretty sure you could tell that there is some bleed through happening. And we are talking about a lot of white pages so i kind of held it like that but yeah there is bleed through you can see some of the words coming in some of, even some of the pictures from the other side so keep that in mind if that bothers you <laughs> aquarian archon that's the dude but 
this is the latest handbook and hopefully we'll get a volume two. So learn you some facts about X-Men characters. Event, well, some X-Men characters, some Avengers, some of the Fantastic Four, right? Ben Graham? No, they do the thing. They go by their superhero code name, not their God-given name. But that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. BD Cosmos, the Canadian leader in graphic novels. They have a physical storefront in Montreal, Quebec, and their website, bdcosmos.com, offers 25% off your order of over $99 or more, and free shipping everywhere in Canada for every order of $200 or more. Their shipping care is exceptional. Your books will stay cozy through the rough Canadian weather and arrive to you in... Near Mint Condition! After checkout, let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way and you'll be added to the monthly $25 gift card raffle. Entries are valid for new and returning customers. Don't be afraid to call or email them. Ask them questions. Their staff is always happy to help guide you towards the right purchase. Visit their website, bdcosmos.com for more. B. D. Cosmos. With rewards and raffles taking care of customers in Canada. A? CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you have the other handbook omnis, if you remember these particular loose leaf pages. Did you have a binder? I know we had a couple at the house. Uh, but and if you still kept it, in what order you put it in? Did you put it in alphabetical? Did you put it by team? Did you put it by deceased, living, whatever it was? Let me know in the comments down below. But that's it, everybody. Hoping to see a volume two. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. Smash that like button on the way out. We are on Patreon and Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. Stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.